When I decided to convert this room into a dedicated theater room, I knew I'd have to do something about the vaulted ceiling and a black drop ceiling seemed like the best answer. But just how hard was it to install and was it all worth it in the end? What's up guys? So in this video, which is like the third or fourth video in the build series, I guess. I, I don't know, I haven't really planned the videos out as much as I'd like to because, you know, moving sucks and takes all of your energy and your soul. But anyway, in this video, we're gonna be installing a drop ceiling, well, at least the grid. I'll be painting the ceiling tiles out in the garage because that ended up being way cheaper than buying black ceiling tiles by like way over 50%. It also allows me to get the color of black or the shade of black, I guess, uh, that I want and it will match the doors and stuff like that. So let me flip the camera around. Uh, I'll show you what I got going on in this room so far and then we'll get started. All right, so as you can see, I got everything covered up here uh, as best I can. I decided not to move everything out of the room because I could just push it against the wall and still have access to the ceiling, any areas that I need. I got the laser level on my light stand here so I can get the proper height. I got a couple lights and stuff, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty straightforward here. I did install a couple of things off camera. Uh, installed another arch window shade, so now there's no light coming from this here other than like the little edges which the curtains will cover up. I also installed this curtain and then three other pleated shades behind it just to really block out the light. What's funny is when I do this I can actually feel the heat coming off of this window because it's in the morning the sun's coming in this way so that's actually dropped the heat down in this room quite a bit. It, it just feels so nice in here now so that's great. I also put on the bifold closet doors which ended up looking really really nice. I'm really glad I went with black instead of this color. I know we'd have that separation between this color and the trim and then it would be this color there but I actually really like how it looks. Um, I don't have the door on yet. After I get the drop ceiling in the next process is getting in the Valencia seats. Um, I do need to get like a little extender for the air vent to come out and then one of the little air diffusers to put in the drop ceiling otherwise the air is just going to be on top of the drop ceiling and that's no good. As you can see, I've marked all the studs with blue painter's tape only because I don't have a pencil that will actually mark on this. I don't have that handy, so go figure. I got all of the drop ceiling stuff laid out down here. I haven't done this before. I'm basically just gonna start with the wall molding, move on to the main beams, which are those right there. Um, they are six feet each, uh, but they can't connect together, so I'll have three main beams going across. I'll have to mark the joists and stuff, but overall it's gonna be pretty simple. So what do you say we just go ahead and get started? Beginning with the wall molding, I knew I wanted a piece to span the length of the arch window. So I figured that would be a great place to start. I then went around the room, starting on the left wall and worked my way towards the arch window. Now, one of the trickiest things about the wall molding was getting the bend right when the side wall met the angled wall. Now, if I screwed this up at all, the wall molding just wouldn't sit flush on the wall and there'd be a gap in between. Now I ended up measuring this multiple times, then cut the wall molding and bent it to create a smooth transition, which I think is called a miter joint. Now this ended up working perfectly on both sides. The small piece connecting the two separate pieces near the front of the room also went in easily, and I wasn't too worried about any small gaps that would show up, as the black ceiling tiles would mask that pretty well. I basically repeated all the same steps on the opposite side of the room, and things seemed to be going smoothly. That is, until I started on the last piece on the back wall and my hand slipped a couple times near the corner, putting two marks on the wall I'd have to paint over later. I knew I was just having too much fun. I then moved on to screwing the eye -like screws into the joist in the ceiling, missing the joist here and there because my stud finder just kept going off whenever I would hold it. Now I figured no one would see the extra holes in the ceiling with the panels installed anyway, so I honestly just didn't care too much. I put the hanger wire in each of the eyelag screws and realized when I started that it would probably have been easier to put the wire in right after I installed each eyelag screw, but eh, what's done is done. I started putting the main beams in and the kit I got basically made it super easy as they just snapped together. I did take some extra time to make sure the end was cut correctly and that the whole thing was level before moving on to the next area. I honestly really enjoyed this part as you can see from the footage that you can start to see the ceiling pattern come together and really take shape, especially once I started putting in the four foot cross tees and the two foot cross tees. What seemed like something that would be impossible at first was really coming together fast, which helped me push on and get the whole ceiling grid done that same day. I did have to cut each cross tee on the outside, which 
made it take a little bit of extra time, but honestly, that was pretty simple as each one just needed to be the same length. Okay, so it's now the next day and I probably forgot to record some time-lapse parts, but the ceiling grid is done and holy crap, this was an experience for sure. Beard's a little longer, I haven't shaved yet. I don't know when I'm gonna shave actually, anyway. The ceiling grid actually went in fairly easily. The wall molding, on the other hand, just really frustrated me. That was honestly the hardest part of the whole thing. I sat down and basically spent about half an hour planning out where the ceiling tiles are going to go and figuring out, basically doing some basic math to figure out, you know, where we need to start the grid and stuff. And I got it pretty close. It's maybe within an inch or two on each side, but it honestly looks super nice. The little eye lag, eyelet, bolts, whatever, the little things that hold up the drop ceiling frame, the grid that screw into the joists uh, went in pretty easily. Again, this isn't like a how-to video. Uh, this is basically me documenting someone who's never ever done this before. So basically what I'm gonna do now is put the ceiling tiles in, starting in the middle, because the grid is square. You need to cut all along the edges of the grid for the ceiling tiles because some of them, you know, are, well, actually all of them are smaller than the actual two by two tiles. So I'm gonna do all of that and then we're gonna paint the tiles because I feel like it's kind of a waste of paint to paint tiles that are gonna be cut anyway. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the plan right now. I finally felt like I was on the home stretch when putting the ceiling tiles in, starting in the center and working my way out towards the walls. Cutting the outer pieces with a sharp utility knife was super easy, though I realized on the first couple tiles that I really should use the measure twice, cut once method. Once I started doing that though, it was smooth sailing. Once all the tiles were cut and in place, I took them out in batches to paint them before putting them back in. Now because the tiles have these small, almost indented areas on them, I needed to paint them at an angle from the top and bottom as well as side to side to avoid any white bleeding through in those areas. Now I did end up thinning the paint to make it go a little further and make it easier on the paint sprayer, though I think this may have worked against me as I ended up having to clear some clogs in the paint sprayer quite a few times. Either that or the paint sprayer just did not like me painting at any sort of angle at all. Now, as I was putting the painted ceiling tiles back up, I ended up using a microfiber cloth to clean off any sort of white fingerprint dust or residue left over from handling them. So the drop ceiling is fully completed and oh man, it actually looks really good. Now, here on the camera, it's doing its auto exposure thing. It doesn't really do it justice. So if I actually adjust it to what you can kind of see in person um, with all the lights kind of shining on it, that's, kind of it right there. It looks really freaking dark in person. So if I turn it back on auto, I'll kind of show you a few things. Now, because of the AC vent right here, I need to actually figure out what I need to do. I actually know what I need to do. I need to get one of these two by two air diffusers in black, some AC ducting, and then a converter, I think it's called a boot, that basically converts the rectangular vent there, or register as it's called, into a circular boot. Basically, I need to figure out what diameter I need to measure that to figure out what kind of boot I need. And then I'll use some HVAC aluminum tape to kind of seal that up. I don't want to use sealant because if I ever need to get in there or swap that out for a reason, that's just going to kind of make it a little difficult if I were to seal this whole thing with a boot on there. I'll have to remove the sealant, all that stuff. But I think it turned out great. As you can probably see, if I zoom in here, I've got a couple little touch-ups here from the wall molding. All of this stuff up here, all the little dust bits, um, actually comes off really easily, although I'm not really worried about that because you're never really gonna see any of that. Most of the tiles turned out great. There's a couple of small touch-ups here and there that I need to do, like right there. And I assure you that if you can see any white in these tiles in this video, you cannot see them in person. It's just the way that the camera is trying to auto white balance and also trying to expose for super dark ceiling tiles. I did put these curtains up with the help of my wife. So that's kind of the uh, big window up front, completely blacked out now. Really helps with the AC and stuff too, because this is a window that gets a lot of sun in the morning. And because of that, there's less heat coming in now. So super cool. But I'll show you what I did. I gotta get it on the step stool here. For the ethernet, and it, this is not ideal and some of you might actually scoff at it. Let me remove this ceiling tile and remove it out of the way. So you'll notice a little cable kind of peeking up there. 
And if I can get the camera up there to see, I actually have two ports coming out of the ceiling right here. Again, I'm not a professional with this at all, but there's a low voltage bracket behind there. There's a bunch of insulation on top of this, so it's really well insulated, not worried about that. Then I got a ton of cable over here. I don't know if the camera could see that. I'm gonna run this cable here, basically down the side right here. Focus, focus, not my finger. So right down here, um, I'm gonna put a little hole through there and go all the way down to there. And then the TV stand's gonna be right here. So uh, kind of makes it super simple. I was originally going to get like a little cable channel to run down the side here. You can't even really see it. So I think I'm just gonna make a small little incision there for a few cables and then uh, just drop it down and zip tie them all together. So you'll never be able to see it behind the curtain. So I'm not too worried about it. The last thing I wanted to get done was to unbox and set up the Valencia Tuscany seat so I could do some videos on them. If you wanna check out those videos, I'll leave links in the description below. But man, these seats definitely impressed me and they still do. A huge thanks to Valencia for sending these out. And that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you have any comments, questions, concerns, recommendations for like the HVAC stuff, leave a comment down below. I definitely appreciate it. I'm not at the point yet where I can really figure out that might be something I do last, but that would be really helpful. So any tips you guys have, let me know down in the comments below. Thank you again so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.